NHL announced a new jersey provider starting a few years from now, and we're going to talk about what it all means on today's episode of Locked on Flames. Your Locked on Flames, your daily podcast on the Calgary Flames, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome to another edition of Locked On Flames. It is your host, Nick Zoraris. I want to thank you for making Locked On Flames your first listen of the day, your team every single day. Today's episode, we are going to be tackling the NHL's early morning announcement of a new on-ice jersey provider for the league fanatics. What that means on a few different levels. Number one, what does that mean league financially wise? What does that say about the league's priorities and the deals they're looking for, whether it be with media rights, apparel, etc.? cetera? I'm going to be talking a little bit about the different types of jerseys that have gone through recent NHL history. I've got a handy collection, so this is a subject very near and dear to my heart. The last segment of today's show, we are going to tackle how to look for jerseys that are not going to hurt your wallet. So, starting with the obvious. Anytime you are announcing a big deal, anytime you are announcing one of the four professional North American sports leagues, their apparel brand, who's going to be the on-field provider because those are the jerseys the fans are going to want, that's a big deal. Then why did the NHL announce it at 6.45 a.m. Eastern time when people on the West Coast are still very much asleep? The early morning heads haven't even gotten to their talk radio jobs yet. Like if the morning drive DJ who starts at 6 a.m. is maybe just getting to the studio on the West Coast when you're announcing news, maybe you don't really want people to know about the news. One of the fun things you can do, and I highly encourage you to do this if you're listening to this episode, or watching on YouTube, which you, you honestly, YouTube's more fun. If you can go under the tweet, any of the tweets, whether it's Greg Wisniewski of ESPN's tweet, the NHL PR accounts tweet announcing this deal, there ain't a single positive fan response underneath it. Fanatics has gotten a bad rap amongst consumers for a variety of reasons the quality of their products, the lackluster designs. Um, their monopolistic approach to the sports athletic wear industry. Just fanatics has sucked all of the oxygen out of the room. They have bought other legacy brands like Mitchell and Ness and starter and folded them underneath the fanatics umbrella to get some legitimacy. And they provide the logistics for the four major North American sports, NASCAR, WWE. They do the shop. They do the online shop for all of the major leagues, even though other brands are the apparel provider, like Nike does the NFL, the NBA and the MLB. The NHL for the last couple of years has done Adidas. Before that, it was Reebok. There was a stretch of CCM, Starter, Nike. There there have been a lot of different jersey providers in the NHL's recent history. But the big picture, like the, the macro level, the most important thing on today's show, this is a subject very near and dear to my heart, as you can tell by the jersey collection I'm flanked by. And this is a fraction of it. That I'm not going to get. We'll talk more about that in the second, third segment. But. When you do a deal for 10 years, that's telling me one thing. You are worried about getting some money locked in, guaranteed, that they can't change the rate on you, what you're going to get, etc. And that tells me you are prioritizing getting your money written down, locked in, legal, legally binding ASAP. The leagues that are doing this stuff right, like the NFL, the NBA, the MLB, they are looking to capitalize their negotiating power every couple of years, every five, six years. That way, with the raising cost of goods and services, they can continue to get more from the people who are providing them their goods. Think about when, think about this. The NHL signed a 10 year TV deal with NBC to do national games and the playoffs. Everybody remembers how that went, especially towards the end, where NBC started phoning it in because they knew they weren't going to be keeping NBCSN as a network. So they stopped putting work into it and it deteriorated over time. But the NHL is very happy to get their 200 something million dollars per year from NBC. That is 
a drop in the bucket compared to what the other leagues get. And I understand the NHL is not going to compete financially with the NFL, with the NBA, or even Major League Baseball, for that matter, in North America in terms of TV rights. But the NHL should be able to squeeze more out of this. And the way to do it is very straightforward. you got to keep rolling your contracts over every couple of years to meet up with the rising inflate rate of inflation. That's the other part of this that is going to really sting for the owners is, yeah, you got locked in for 10 years at a set rate, which I didn't see what the rate was per year, but you got locked in at a set rate. And as inflation happens, as the cost of good changes, Maybe that deal doesn't look as good six years from now, but you're locked in for 10. And those last three, four years of Fanatics as your on-ice jersey provider, that doesn't look as good. That's really what the challenge is here and why I'm not as big of a fan of locking in for such a long term up front. It's a complicated situation. I I understand there are things that I, as a jersey collector, do not understand about being a jersey manufacturer, about being a professional sports owner. I will say. When all of your consumers are unanimous and like, hey, this is a bad idea, I think that tells you you didn't consider other factors at hand here. Fanatics has gotten a rough rap amongst consumers. You think about all of the misprints you'll see on social media where someone will order one jersey and they'll get the numbers for one player, the nameplate of another, and then the numbers on the back of a completely different player as well. I have seen shirts the screen printed shirts where the front is one team's logo and then the name and the player on the back are on another team entirely. The other problem here is the quality of their product. Fanatics t-shirts are known to get worn out very quickly in the wash. I, I, if you are familiar with East Coast beach culture, you've probably stepped foot in one of those t-shirt shops at some point in the last couple of summers. And they always ask you, do you want to put wax on the shirt? So that way, once you put it in the wash, it doesn't get worn out and the numbers and whatever design you have on it stay fresh. Yeah, that would be a good thing, typically. But the NHL and now Fanatics, the jersey provider of the NHL, their jerseys, their shirt, excuse me, their shirts do not do well in the wash. I have more than one shirt because Fanatics is the official apparel provider, even though they aren't doing the jerseys. Adidas does the authentics. Those shirts do not fare well in the wash. I have 10, 15 t-shirts from Fanatics over the years where the numbers and the designs on them are just worn out. They they just are, they're cracked, they're faded. And that's not a good look for a t-shirt that's $40. Do you remember when t-shirts were $20? I remember when the Rangers traded for Rick Nash going to a sporting goods store in my mall, in the mall near my house and buying a Rick Nash t-shirt for $20. That very same t-shirt is $40 now, and the numbers fade faster. How does that make sense? We are going to talk about the recent jersey NHL, the recent NHL jersey providers. We'll talk Reebok. We'll talk Adidas. We'll talk about the difference between an authentic game used jersey and a fan authentic jersey. There's a lot we can discuss in this subject. I am well versed in this subject. It will be a lot of fun. But first, we have got, got, to talk about our friends at FanDuel. The tournament is heating up now, and it is the perfect time to download FanDuel, America's number one sports book, because new customers get a no-sweat first bet up to $1,000. Whatever your first bet is, FanDuel will match it, and if it does not hit, you will get bonus bets back. Download the FanDuel Sportsbook app. It's safe, secure, and super easy to use. Then you can bet on everything from the money line to point scores and threes drain. Second weekend of March Madness coming up. Very much looking forward to watching Tennessee, who I picked to win the whole thing in my bracket. That'll be fun. If you are so inclined, they have fun features that allow you to focus in on core markets like spread, money line. Then there's player props where you have points, rebounds, assists, and exclusive bets like the two by three, two three pointers scored in the first two minutes. Plus, FanDuel lets you combine your bets for a chance at a bigger payout with a same game parlay where you were able to stake together multiple outcomes together to increase your odds and your payout. So, do not miss your chance to get your no sweat first bet up to $1,000 in bonus bets when you go to fanduel.com slash locked on. That's fanduel.com slash locked on to learn more. Make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sports betting partner of the NBA. FanDuel's the only sports betting app on my phone. Thank you once again, friends, for being here on a really interesting day in the NHL landscape where we're talking about jerseys here on Locked on Flames. 
your team every single day. So I am an avid jersey collector, as anybody who has ever seen me on social media. I got to redo the picture I took a couple years ago of every single hockey jersey laid out on my bed. And like, I had to go like two layers of jerseys, how many hockey jerseys I have. So going back, so we're at a point now where we've got the Adidas Authentics, which are what the players on ice wear now. And then there's the tier below that, the replica jersey. So there's replicas and then there's Authentics. Then there's knockoffs, and we're going to talk about knockoffs too. But there's the replica and the Authentic. The Authentic jersey is supposed to be an imitation of what the players on the ice are wearing. The replica jersey is a replica of the authentic jersey. Some of the details will be slightly different. The numbers will be heat pressed on instead of stitched on. The logo will be heat pressed on instead of stitched on. There will be slight differences in the uh, sides of the jerseys. And I'm going to explain here in a minute. It's why I pulled a bunch of jerseys out of my closet for the purposes of this exercise, how to be able to tell the difference, what each one is, that kind of thing. So because you've got those two tiered goods, you are inherently saying because one jersey is more expensive than the other it's more desirable than the other you should be want to pay more for this because it's better than the other one the fanatics jersey which right now is the replica so fanatics is making a replica of the adidas authentic that is the pitch behind the fanatics breakaway jersey which right now is the replica which goes for i believe 180 dollars uh, is the msrp and then the authentic depending where you buy it and if you get it from a jersey provider where you get it from like a specialty shop where i've been inclined to get mine when i buy jerseys for retail price or you buy it at the arena it's all going to be a different price depending on where you look what type of good you're looking for the number one rule in jersey collecting is you will get what you pay for if something looks too good to be true it probably is if you see a jersey that's only 40 dollars and the picture on the listing is the nhl.com image of the graphic of a jersey as opposed to the jersey itself you are probably not going to be getting an authentic jersey which is something we're going to talk about too because that is part of this so there it used to be so when reebok was the jersey provider they had the reebok premiere and the reebok authentic so a couple differences between the two number one these numbers are stitched on these numbers are heat pressed on. The numbers are not as thick. They're not as, the texture is different on these. This feels plasticky. This feels fabricy. That's a real difference between the two. Another one, the Reebok Premier does not have a fight strap. The Reebok Authentic does have a fight strap. Noticeable difference. The Reebok Authentic does not have ports on the side. The Reebok Premier has these gaps here on the side different styles, trying to distinguish between the two. That's typically how in the, I've been able to spot the differences at a quick glance. I'm also, you know, obsessed with this stuff. So I know this stuff really well. There are a number of people who, a number of content people who have done really excellent videos on being able to have to tell the difference between a real and a fake jersey, which is something we're about to talk about now. I'm standing up to pull this off the rack here. So this is a knockoff jersey. There's a few dead giveaways. Number one, Whenever you see a logo with bubbling, we're like, look, it, you can see this here. I'm pressing down and you can see that air bubble going down. That tells you this logo is heat printed on and stitched around and not pressed down properly the way it's supposed to be. There was air underneath it when the logo was pressed down, which means it wasn't put on right. And then on the back is really the dead giveaway. So number one, the K in Reebok is too big. It's misaligned with the rest of the word. This is not the Edmonton Oilers font. McDavid would not look like this on an authentic. Next, on these bubbles, you again, just like the logo on the front, there's bubbles underneath the lettering. You can press down and the air bubbles come out. And most tellingly, this is supposed to be the Reebok Premier. The Reebok Premier does not have a fight strap. The Reebok Authentics have fight straps here as I'm angling away from the camera. But you can also tell... This fight strap, significantly thinner than the fight strap on the authentic jersey. These represent an, a part of the community. There are always going to be people who don't want to pay full retail price for an authentic jersey. And I don't blame them. Jersey collecting is an expensive habit. If you don't know, 
where to look, what to do, that kind of thing. So I'm not going to begrudge people who collect jerseys and have a couple fakes in their collection. I have a couple of fake jerseys in my collection. I got them when I did not have the money to spend on collectibles like this. This is a luxury. This is a hobby. This is not something you are going to make money on unless you want to liquidate a significant portion of your collection. Your return on an investment of a jersey will always be bad. That's the thing here. You are not buying jerseys to resell them if you wear them. The only way you can make money flipping jerseys if if you are buying jerseys new with the tags and then saying, I'm not wearing this, you're going to sit on it for a couple of years and then sell it. Then you could probably make some money selling jerseys that are kind of like dead sock. That That's the expression in the collectible community, whether it's shoes, jerseys, mer memorabilia, whatever. If it's dead stock, then you can make money flipping it. But for the purposes of this conversation, you're not going to make money flipping jerseys. Like most of these, like that was 40, the uh, Rick Nash jersey there, that was 40 bucks. The Jack Eichel jersey was 50 bucks. This, this over here, this is a game used jersey. This I paid way too much money for, but... Uh, Big Keith Yandel guy back in the day. Uh, and that's something else we can talk about real quick here too. So somebody might say a jersey is game used. The way to tell, on the fight strap, it's going to have a logo or there's going to be a barcode on the inside collar of the jersey that you can scan and it'll tell you when and where it was used. This, it tells you New York Rangers set three, 2015, 2016 Eastern Conference. Whereas on the replica of the authentic, so... This is the Reebok Authentic. The Reebok Authentic fight strap does not have a Rangers logo on it. It does not have games played on it logo. That's the difference between those two. And part of what I find interesting about signing up with Fanatics is that Fanatics has never done this before. Reebok has done jerseys for did jerseys for the NFL for a long time. Adidas has done jer soccer jerseys for quite a long time. Adidas provider college football teams. Reebok provider college football teams. Reebok has been around a while. Adidas has been around a while. Fanatics is a relatively new company that's trying to get involved in a bunch of different spaces. They are going at this aggressively and trying to buy their way into legitimacy. And it, it's why I'm a little weary of this and why, as a jersey collector, I'm a little nervous because. This is a hobby of mine, and if Fanatics floods the marketplace with a bad product that's overpriced, it's going to make the older jerseys that are better quality and just flat out better looking more expensive on the secondary market, which is really going to be a hamper. So one last thing on this subject before we move on, and then in the third segment, we'll talk a little bit about how you can find jerseys for an affordable price. The thing I want to touch on is what makes this fun? is the social contract of you see somebody else in the jersey, a hat, a shirt, a sweatshirt of your favorite team. You're going to go, hey, let's go, Flames. Let's go, Rangers. Let's go, Stars, or Panthers, Hurricanes, whatever. That has always been one of my favorite things in the social contract, no matter where I am. If I'm wearing a hat, someone points at your hat, you don't even have to take your headphones out. They just point at the, their head. That's how you know. Let's go support the team. I've always – always love that feeling, especially on a big game day where everybody's going about their business. Everybody's got a little pep in their step. You see guys with the jerseys on who know they're going to the game. That's always the, that's always good eye contact. You lock eyes with them. You give them the nod. Like, yeah, you go be loud. You go support the team. The Jerry Seinfeld bit about we root for the laundry of the city, not the guys on the team. You go to another, a guy leaves the team, goes to another city. They'll boo you because we're rooting for the laundry, not the team, not the players on the team. Always, always going to be a funny bit that I love quoting. One last point, if I may. As you can tell, I, I do I do love this subject. This is one of my favorite things to talk about as a jersey head. The Reebok jerseys were a great point in time because they had two price points that were manageable and the quality of the two products was about $50. You felt like you weren't getting ripped off between the two. When the NHL switched from Reebok to Adidas after the 2016-2017 season, so 2017-2018 was the first year of Adidas as the jersey providers, the NHL store in Manhattan, when it was still on 6th Avenue up on, I think it was 48th or 49th Street, when it was right across the street from Radio City over by the Fox News headquarters, when they switched over, the deals were insane. And that's one thing I'm looking forward to about this. And about a year from now, Adidas jersey is going to be significantly cheaper. They're going to be a lot easier to find. That should be exciting and make for an interesting point for collectors and make it easier to get jerseys that you are looking for. But before we talk about how you can expand your jersey collection, we have got to talk about 
a service that the Calgary Flames might want to enlist to look for a GM, a coach, maybe an assistant coach, maybe just one guy to say, hey, man, I wouldn't do that if I were you. We are, of course, talking about our friends at Indeed. If you're hiring, you need Indeed because Indeed is the hiring partner where you can attract, interview, and hire all in one place. And Indeed is the only job site where you're guaranteed to find quality applicants that meet your high-end requirements or else you don't have to pay. Instead of spending hours on multiple job sites hoping to find candidates with the right skills, you need one powerful hiring partner that can do it all. With Instant Match, as soon as you sponsor a post, you get a short list of quality candidates with resumes on Indeed that match your job description, and you can invite them to apply right away. Plus, you only pay for quality applicants that meet your must-have requirements. One of the things I love about Indeed is it makes hiring all in one place so easy, and you get to weed out candidates with useful features like instant match where it, you only get candidates that meet your requirements assessments so you can weed out people who maybe are saying things on their resume that they aren't actually at, good at and with instant match 90 percent of employers get quality candidates as soon as they sponsor a job post according to indeed's internal data candidates are invited to apply through instant match are three times more likely to apply to your job than candidates who only see the listing for the job Indeed knows finding the right skills make all the difference. That's why you only pay for applicants for quality candidates that meet your requirements. Starting right now, with a $75 sponsored job credit to upgrade your job post at indeed.com slash locked on. That offer is valid through March 31st. Go to indeed.com slash locked on to claim your $75 credit before March 31st. Indeed.com slash locked on. Terms and conditions apply. Need to hire? You need indeed. Once again, I want to thank everybody for hanging out with us this early Tuesday afternoon. Originally, I was going to do this episode later in the day. Maybe wait till after the the uh, the Kings, the Flames, who got slaughtered by the Kings last night. If you did not see my imitation at Eric Taylor from Friday Night Lights talking to the team after the game last night, I highly encourage you to check out the episode that went out early Tuesday morning at like 3 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, I think was the time it finally posted to YouTube. Highly encourage you to check that out. Thank you for making Locked on Flames your first listen of the day. This is your team every single day. So now, few minutes left in today's episode. We're going to talk real quick about how you can find jerseys you are looking for for reasonable prices. So rule number one, you are going to get what you pay for. Like I said in the last segment, if you see a jersey that's only 40 or $50, unless it's a player who hasn't been on the team in a long time, somebody who's been traded, you are probably not going to be buying an authentic jersey. Remember everything we went over with the McDavid jersey, the bubbling on the letters, the bubbling on the logo, the font on the name, on the neck plate, on the back. All of those details will tell you if the jersey is authentic or not. That's number one. Number two, the secondary market is your friend. Things like eBay, Depop, Mercari, you're going to be able to find things a little bit more affordable. And if you are looking for specific players, eBay has a useful feature where you can set a push notification for every time uh, something meeting your search requirements gets posted. When I was looking for a Keith Yandel Rangers jersey a couple of years ago, I had that notification on. Every single time something went up, unfortunately, they were mostly hockey cards because there were just not a lot of Keith Yandel Ranger jerseys. He was only on the team for one and a half, one season and a trade deadline. So it was a little difficult to find one of those. And I ended up having to find this on a Facebook marketplace group, which is why I ended up with a game worn jersey, game worn jersey, as opposed to just a Reebok premiere or a Reebok authentic. So that's the other part. You got to be knowing where to look. The secondary marketplaces like Depop, Mercari, and um, eBay, those are my bread and butter. I'm constantly looking. Even if I'm not buying, I'm always looking, keeping an eye on what certain players are going for, what a good price for players is. I've been looking for a Mitch Marner Leafs jersey for a little while now, so I've been keeping my eye. Probably going to end up having to spend at least $130, $150, which that's a lot better than retail. I really don't want to pay $230 for an Adidas Mitch Marner jersey, but if I have to, if I really – this is another point. Teams charge what they charge at the team store because they know people buy things emotionally. When you buy a jersey at a team store and it's $300 at the arena, but it's $230 online, 
they are price gouging you because they know you just saw the player do this, the team won, and you're all excited, and you had a couple of drinks, and you're, I want to buy a jersey. And that's why they char- upcharge you $70, $80 on what retail price is based on where you could get it on the on the direct market where you would buy it from Adidas directly or one of the, one of the uh, jersey specialty shops like Cool Hockey or something like that. So your secondary market is your friend. Google search is your friend. I've definitely found a few jerseys just by Googling them, clicking the little shopping button underneath the Google logo. And that's done wonders for my jersey hunting is looking like that. I found the Connor McDavid Team North America jersey on there at a sporting goods shop, a, a brick and mortar sporting goods shop in Western Pennsylvania. They had had that jersey in stock for more than three years and still hadn't sold it. I was able to get it for less than retail price, which I was very excited about. So. Jersey collecting is a very fun hobby. It is a very expensive hobby. Do yourself a favor. Look for deals. You cannot grow a jersey collection if you are not bargain hunting. It is the only way to survive in this hobby. As somebody who has 70 hockey jerseys in their closet, trust me, I've only paid full price for five of them. You cannot really seriously collect if you are not paying retail price. And Do not be that guy. Uh, This is the last point I'm going to make on today's show before I get everyone out of here to have a good day. Do not shame the people who wear these. These are people who want to support the same team that you love to. It does not matter. You are wearing the same colors. You are supporting the same team. Sometimes the very same player. Support each other. It does not matter who is wearing what jersey. As long as they're wearing the same jersey as you. You are on the same side. Do not be rude. Do not act better than people who have jerseys like this. They want to support the team just like you, but they can't afford it. They don't know the difference between a real and authentic jer- a real jersey and a knockoff jersey. Be nice. That That's the parting words for you guys on today's episode of Locked on Flames. Before we get out of here, got to remind everyone, come on now, make sure you subscribe to the show wherever you get your podcast, available on all the major podcasting platforms, available for free on YouTube as well. Join us in the comment section, vote in our polls, which I'm going to post one up after I post this video about which jersey provider has been your favorite in recent NHL history. Make sure that since you made Locked On Flames your first listen of the day, you go check out another Locked On pod for your second listen of the day. Today, I'm giving a shout out. The Rangers are on a nice little heater. They're playing the Carolina Hurricanes tonight. Go check out check out Locked On Rangers. Get a feel for what it could be like if things started to turn around for the Flames for a team that took a few steps back to take a few steps forward. That'll do it for today's episode. I hope you guys enjoyed. I'll see you guys tomorrow.